Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today I'm going to be playing To End All Wars again. Uh, it's going to be another look at that series, uh, or not series, but that game. Uh, last time you left us here, we had just lost a defeat where an entire core of ours had been defeated uh, near Morgenhau. Um, I saw someone on my uh, channel say they thought it was happening near Metz, but uh, I'm not sure. It said it was the Battle of Morgenhau, so I'm not sure. We can see some German reinforcements uh, coming in from into the Saar. Uh, meanwhile, the German army in Strasbourg is still their strongest army. Saarburg is a little bit weaker. We have, it looks like we've lost... Oh, no, never mind. So we still control Morgenhau itself, uh, the entirety of that province, and we still have Metz besieged. But our army is fairly exhausted. We're training some new troops and reserves and all of that. I need to call up some more troops, though, so I'm going to go ahead and enter in the recruitment phase. We are in early December of 1914, so I think it certainly is going to pay to go ahead and raise some additional troops. Now, one thing I really do wish the game would add uh, would be this an actual sense of, whoops, we don't need to raise Indian troops, uh, would be an actual sense of kind of, right now the Western Allies, all of their resources are pooled. And while that's convenient from a gameplay standpoint, it's a little bit annoying um, to see that uh, your troops are always, essentially you're always, um, we'll raise two pioneer units here. See how much money it doesn't take very much money or manpower. Uh, it just it's just kind of annoying to me how you always um, you know I can raise a whole bunch of British, I can raise a whole bunch of French. It doesn't seem to make a difference what I decide to raise, whether they're British or French, and it just makes building a, a balanced and and kind of unique army kind of kind of difficult. But uh, you can see here we're raising some troops. These guys are all being ordered and trained and all of that. So we're spending a fair bit of money on that. Go ahead and raise some medium artillery, because I don't think light artillery is going to be all that useful. Um, I'll raise two units of medium artillery here. And you can see our manpower and our money is declining, but we still have quite a bit left. I'd also like to raise some African troops. So if we jump out here to Africa, um, we haven't really reduced the German colonies yet, and that's something I want to work on. So we're going to go ahead and raise some colonial troops here in British East Africa. And Mombasa, and it looks like the only place we can raise those guys. Um, we can raise some Indian troops, but where where do we raise them? Do we have to go? Let's see here. Where are the Indian troops? No, that's diplomacy. Mm. Oh, India, where are you? How do I raise Indian troops? I don't even see India on this map. That's Hong Kong. And we go over here. Oh, British India. There we go. Ooh, we've got we've got the Indian army. That's actually a pretty decent size. We've got what looks like three cores here, three hundred thirty manpower. So maybe we should get to work transporting them to to Europe. Um anyway, sorry, yeah, go back into I want to raise some infantry divisions, a militia infantry division. We'll raise in British India. We'll raise a regular infantry division in Brit British India. Actually, we'll raise a few. Maybe a cavalry division as well. And, uh, yeah, so we raised that's several units there. Um, we can raise one more militia unit. Okay, so several units raised in India now, and then I think we'll go ahead and jump over to the French side and uh, get some French uh, troops being raised. Again, uh, we'll go ahead and raise some colonial troops in Africa first. So I'd like to reduce the German colonies. Oh, we can only raise one. Gosh darn it. For all that territory, we don't even have, like, do we have a North African area we can raise these troops? North Africa on map? Okay. Can't raise them in Tunis. It's kind of weird. North Africa is kind of on the map, but kind of not on the map. But it doesn't look like Algeria gives us the ability to raise much of anything. So, yay for that pointlessness. And so, yeah, the French colonials, you don't have a whole lot of them to raise. We'll go ahead and raise some French troops now. Try and raise them close to the battlefield so we've got them... Uh, ready for combat here. We're going to raise a pioneer brigade to kind of maybe build some specialists. Actually, why don't we do that? We're going to raise kind of a specialist force here uh, near Verdun. Oh, Colonial. 
Indochina. Ooh, I don't know. If, do I want to raise Indochina troops? I don't know. Um, do I want to raise colonial troops? I don't know. Where where do I, I zoom out here? Maybe it'll give me an idea where these guys can. So, uh, that, okay, so, I mean, we're into December. Okay, I can raise them there. So, North African, I don't know what FL stands for. French Colonial Division FL, French Colonial Division North Africa. And Africa obviously stands for North Africa, but what does FL stand for? I have no clue. Okay, so we're raising those guys there. We'll go ahead and raise these guys in Algeria. We'll go back into France. Um, we already, it looks like we raised kind of the most we can at Verdun. We'll raise an engineer unit here. And I guess we'll pull up some more reserve divisions. I mean, I'm just kind of raising troops all over, just wherever we can. Uh, we need as many troops as we can get. Um, you know, I think reserve troops are more than adequate for most of what I need to do. I'm going to raise a regular unit or two here at Reims. Well, it looks like we can only, only raise one, apparently. Um, and then we'll raise some more troops around Paris, or what we can. Uh, also need some medium artillery again, because I'm not sure how useful light artillery is going to be. Ooh, we don't need that. I don't want to raise a balloon, balloon battalion. And um, regular infantry. What? I'm so confused. Okay. There we go, Versailles, and Orleans. So, attempting to replace some of our casualties here. Um, a French Mountain Brigade. We could raise that. A BDE stands for Brigade, by the way. I don't know what we're going to use them for. Maybe if Italy comes into the war. We don't really need liners. Um, do we need heavy artillery? We probably could use it. So why don't we raise some heavy artillery here in Lyons. Or Lyon. Looks like the only place we can raise it right now. I'm hoping we have enough supply. Could be wrong there. We'll raise some munitions here at Sedan. I don't honestly know what munitions do. Super heavy artillery, can't raise that anywhere. Dreadnought, looks like we don't have enough money. So we've kind of burned through a good deal of money and manpower. That'll be about it for that. So we've got that done. Um, we'll go ahead and go into the decisions mode, see what we can do here. Uh, we can build a munitions factory. I don't want to build it near the front. So we'll build another munitions factory. One uh, we'll say in Versailles and then in Orleans. And um, looks like we've got a reasonable amount of munitions here, about 359, but um, I'm not totally convinced that's enough yet. So we'll build one more in London. So we've got three of those that we're ordering up. Um, and we don't need to do that with the fort guns. We don't really need new generals. We don't need to change government, bomb fort, declare war. So we really don't need to do anything else here that I can see in the decisions mode. And uh, yeah, we can go to the strategic atlas, but we're going to avoid that. And... Okay, um, let's get out of there. So you can see it's winter now. Um, kind of change our overlays to show who's who's conquering what. The winter terrain makes it kind of hard to see here. Um, but yeah, so I had it suggested that this main army here should advance into, into Germany proper, but I think part of the problem here is Strasbourg could easily swing over to Freiburg and cut off our supply. So any kind of advance that direction is going to require the German troops in um, Strasbourg be dealt with. I can't see what their entrenchment level is, but it's got to be pretty heavy. They haven't moved since the start of the war. So I think attempting to attack Strasbourg at this point is probably suicidal. Now, the best option is probably getting into Saarbrücken and cutting off one rail route and then getting somewhere into maybe uh, like Baden so we can kind of cut them off from supply. That would probably be the best route. Granted, they're on a river, so we'd probably have to fully surround them, I would guess, because they could bring supplies down the Rhine. Um, but yeah, that would be my guess as far as what the best route is. Now, I've still got an avenue here we can advance into Germany proper, but I don't... I'm concerned with that. Because I don't have, you know, I haven't reduced Metz all the way yet. And until we do, I think advancing in this direction is a bit risky. But what I will do is it looks like the British Expeditionary Force can probably fairly safely advance into the Saar. Because the Germans don't have any troops here in Lorient, uh, which would be... Um, 
you know, the neighboring territory, the only way that we can see that they can bring reinforcements into Theonville, which would cut us off. So I'm going to advance the BEF here. I don't know what the Germans have in the Saar, but uh, actually, is that even those two away or one away? No, yeah. I'm going to advance them into the Saar and uh, see... I guess what we have in front of us, I hope it's nothing too strong. BEF's starting to recover some of its strength, but still still fairly weak here. Um, we're bringing reinforcements in, as you can see here. We've got some troops, or we've brought in the channel fleet, if you will, and uh, are trying to bring in the entity. So we're going to zoom out here. Whoops. We're going to keep the British on the northern portion of the battlefield, I think. What we'll do is we'll try and rail these guys over here. It says it's going to take 122 days, but uh, maybe we can make it go a little bit quicker. We've got plenty of rail points to move them, so they should actually be able to fill the BEF's position in just 16 days. It's a pretty strong force under James McGrearson. Um, about, what is that, 200 uh, combat points. Uh, we've got the French fleet, and okay, so that's all that we've got there. Do we have anything in Laharve? I thought I brought more troops than that over. But I guess I might have just merged everyone. Yeah, so we've got, you know, British reinforcements are arriving, and um, the French are also raising new troops as well, um, although a lot of them are still kind of tied down to being garrison troops here at this point. Um, let's see here. Yeah, most of these troops are still being raised here in Paris, and I believe I've gotten some of my reinforcements forward. But basically, all those units with the little red slash can't be moved. They're locked in place. They're in the process of being recruited. So I think the only advance I'm going to have is going to be toward the SAR with the BEF. Hopefully, they don't run into anything too tricky. Should be far enough away to avoid any kind of you know movement um, from the enemy to, to their, their front. Move this reserve division into... Um, Morgan Howe to reinforce the French troops there. Uh, we'll have them in a defensive posture so that way they don't get slaughtered by themselves. And let's see, we've got about 1,100, 1,400. I mean, we've got, I'm trying to, 1,400, 17. Probably if we could reduce, um, Morgan Howe is still, basically if we can reduce Sarborough and Morgan Howe, where the Germans do have smaller forces. If we can get there, we might be able to assault Strasbourg because we definitely outnumber the German main force there uh, in terms of power. Looks like they're also overstacked here. It says there's a 20% penalty for being overstacked, um, although our troops have a 38% penalty, so that might not be the best route. Anyway, um, so we're moving troops in by rail from a couple of directions, and I think we're good to go. We'll go ahead and end the early December turn and uh, proceed to the next turn and see what happens. Loading master file. By the way, these uh, icons that I ignored down at the bottom right here of the, of the screen, I did talk about at the end of the last video. So if you're curious what happened, go ahead and check that out. Basically, just some battle results. Uh, nothing too fantastical. Uh, we did look at the Eastern Front, and it looked like the Russians were starting to turn things around a bit. Might have even had some German troops cut off. It wasn't entirely clear. But uh, we're just waiting for the turn here. They do take a little bit longer than I'd like, um, but I don't think they're as bad as people make them out to be. And um, as you can see here, we've made some pretty substantial success. We've basically taken all the border provinces with the exception of Sarborough and Strasbourg. Um, interestingly enough, I was talking with... Uh, a fellow named Ragnar over on uh, Belugan campaign is kind of complaining about the Strasbourg location on the map that it's not historically accurate. I think Strasbourg was either on the other side of the river or it's it's just in the wrong position. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a few minor geographical errors. If I don't point them out, I apologize. I am not from Europe, so I won't pretend to know the exact locations that places should be. Um, you know, I, I do think it's important that people get those kinds of things right. But, you know, on a game this big, on a scale this big, there will probably be mistakes that slip through. Um, nothing that I've seen so far that would hinder any kind of enjoyment of the game or anything like that. So it's been about a minute, um, unless my math is totally wrong. And uh, so far, not a whole lot of movement. 
Looks like the Germans do have a full-blown army in, Saar, in the Saar, though, because we can see a general there. So hopefully the BEF isn't walking into a trap. Uh, but they do look like they've got good supply, good morale, and um, I don't remember the three, the, the green, red, and, and, and blue. Good morale, good supply, um, good cohesion, maybe, something like that. So I guess we'll see what happens here. Uh, I think they'll be too isolated to pull off any reinforcements or any reserves from anywhere else. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay, so we've got another battle happening in Metz here. Um, we can go ahead and do a strong center. We'll go ahead and mass our fire. Uh, it looks like the enemy's got about 190 to our 818, so hopefully that's a successful battle. Nice. French victory, another one. And holy cow, we lost 53,000 more men. Man, reducing this fort is being coming, it's like Verdun. It's like what the Germans said about Verdun, that the French would bleed themselves dry. I mean, we did inflict 20,000 casualties, so the Germans are definitely going to lose the next round, but this has just been a bloodbath. It's going to certainly prevent me from being able to advance in any kind of meaningful way uh, for a while here. Okay, so there's a battle taking place in the Saar. Um, our French troops, the enemy is a better commander than us. They've got just slightly less firepower than us. <sighs> oh, John French, why couldn't you be better? So we can try and break the enemy lines using force concentration. Uh, we can go with strong. What does this give us as an option? Cavalry breakthrough. This battle plan will use cavalry units to charge the enemy line. I don't even know what the makeup of my army is. Uh, click here to let the AI choose the best option for you. Okay. What if we do this? Does it just choose the best one? Nope, it still says Cavalry Breakthrough is the best option. So I'm going to trust the AI here, uh, and we'll see what happens. Although we're in a forest and it's snowy, so I don't think that's going to be the best. Mm. All right, let's see what happens. British victory! Awesome! So we lost about 10,000 men. We only had about 50,000 men, so that's a pretty bold gamble. Uh, the Germans under Hermann von Strantz uh, lost 14,000 men, so for once we inflicted more losses on them than they on us. And uh, that was almost half their force, so we lost about a tenth of ours. They lost just shy of half of theirs. And uh, I gotta think that's gonna be a good result for us. And yeah, so British victory near the Saar, although it looks like we lost about half of our firepower there. Meanwhile, the Syria army has arrived in Yemen, and the entity has suffered a defeat. Over 6,000 men. The Yemen colonial regiment has been defeated by the Ottomans there. So uh, I probably need to get a little bit more focused on the um, colonial war, which I've really been more or less ignoring so far um, in order to make sure that we don't let those Ottomans walk all over us. Because let's face it, the Ottoman army was somewhat of a joke. Um... But anyway, so that was a much better turn this round. You know, we did lose, the French lost heavily again in another battle, much more than the Germans, yet again. Um, fortunately, the Germans have to split their forces between us and the Russians, so equal casualties against the Germans in the long run is probably better for us. Although, I believe Germany at this time was bigger than France. Um, France actually had a larger standing army when you include um, the... When you include... <laughs> Uh, France actually had a larger standing army when you included the um, active military. They had a larger active army, but the uh, Germans had a larger um, army when you include their reserves. So let's see here. Um, Morgan Howe is... What's the status of that province? 100% Western entity, despite the fact that the Germans have an army there. Interesting. Uh, Strasbourg is now what? 96% entity, so I'm going to guess we are going to win that battle the next turn, but we definitely have some armies that are going to need some time to rest and take some reinforcements here. Um, we're going to give these guys an aggressive stance here, so they are going to take the train here uh, to whatever this region is, Theonville, but hopefully if we set them on an aggressive stance, if the Germans counterattack at the Saar, we can bring these reinforcements in. Otherwise, I'll probably have to pull back from the Saar but uh, Cavalry Breakthrough was successful, and, and the Tsar has um, fallen into, well, maybe not into our control. Central Powers still control it. They still have an army there, um, but we did win a victory there, at the very least. Hold at all costs. Okay, John French, now that you've 
lost almost half your strength there. So we've got reinforcements coming in from Britain. That's a good thing. Uh, we've also got some troops that we're still in the process of raising and training. You can see there's a munition factory being built. Let's see, what, we, what do we have in London? Uh, the 7th Infantry Division being built. Ooh, artillery. So let's go ahead and maybe we should build up a force in Southampton. I think that's where we're going to go ahead and send our uh, troops as they get ready. We've got one uh, RFA. I don't know what that is. Royal Field Artillery. So I guess that's a light artillery. Uh, and that is the... I guess we can send the airships over there. Um, Admiralty, the British Army. Kitchener is still based out of London. Maybe we should move them over the seas. A, a Minesweeper Squadron in London. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to move these guys down into Southampton as well. This looks like a Welsh army or something like that currently in Cardiff. Go ahead and move them by rail because we've got some spare rail points. And also the 6th Infantry Division is being raised. What about these guys? The Midlands Force will also move down into Southampton. Uh, they're also going to go ahead and take trains. So we're going to build up a large British force here in Southampton to go save the day in France. Uh, maybe not save the day, but at least replace some of our losses. Um... So we've got that army coming down. What else do we have? Do we have anything else? Shurnish, Dover, Territorials, Flying Corp. Bring the Flying Corp down here. Dover Defense and Shurnish and the Navy Guard. Okay, so we could bring the Royal Marines. I don't know if the, I don't know if that's worth pulling them out, and putting them, putting them over the seas. Um. Yeah, London is a seventh. I don't think we can pull anyone else out of London. Okay, I think we're just about good. We've got two pretty decent sized forces. Oh, we've got the Scottish forces up in Glasgow. Um, not independent after the recent vote. And we'll send them down by rail as well. So we're going to have a pretty strong army there um, that we're going to be able to bring into France before too long. Um, i got to go ahead and pull these troops out. Where were the, where was the, the fleet? Where's the British? Okay. This flotilla is going to move back to Southampton. And, um, yeah, because they, they don't have any trans, any troops on their transports. And, yeah. Okay, so they did their job in escorting that. The first relief force here. Um, to the BEF, which is pretty isolated and exposed, but any German defeats here on the, the front lines are a good thing, as it will hopefully draw um, away forces from the actual eastern front. I don't know what the yellow flag means, but it looks like the Germans are bringing reinforcements. They've got the 12th Corps and Alas, which is just to the east of Sarborough and Strasbourg. Uh, meanwhile, in here we've got... Well, what do we want to do with them? We've only they've only got an army of forty. Provide a command. Provide a command. Required command. These guys require six, six, twenty-four, thirty. Okay, so we don't. Mm. Maybe we need to form a new core because we don't have enough command to satisfy any of these. We can put these guys into the clinic army. Um. 10% penalty, 20% penalty, 30% penalty, 24, 20, or I guess, what's this army at? So the best army to put these guys in is probably the Reserve Army of Lorient, the 5th Infantry Division. So again, there's going to be slight penalties here for having these guys under units that they're probably... Um, yeah, anyway, they're probably... I need to reorganize my military, essentially, is where I'm coming from. But essentially, we've got six, seven, okay. Yeah, so we've got well over a thousand men here in Morganau. Um, aviation unit. The enemy could drive into the Vogues, but that would definitely invite a counterattack. I think the Germans are probably out of out over um, too far, too large, overstacked here in Strasbourg. As you can see, their strength is dwindling a bit. And uh, we're bringing in over 300 firepower, but again, the British Expeditionary Force here in the SAR is probably overextended. Um, 
Meanwhile, in Metz, the Germans are besieged, but they're almost defeated. And that's good there. So a reasonably good turn there in early December. Um, these troops here in South Africa are no longer locked into position, so that's good. General Smuts. And do we have a, the Praetoria Garrison Royal... <sighs> good Hope Division, Cape of Good Hope Division. So they're not strong enough to advance on East Africa. Not yet, anyway. It might be strong enough to advance on Cameroon... All right, we're going to advance this uh, unit, although a Marine Division and two Colonials, so I don't know how effective they're going to be at fighting. I don't have any ideas what the Germans have in, in uh, Togo, but we're going to advance there. Um, this unit, the Lagos Garrison and South Nigerian Garrison, is probably too weak to take Cameroon. I don't want to leave East Africa undefended against the Germans there, so I'll probably leave that as is. We've got... I didn't realize we had troops in... Or we control Kuwait. That's cool. Oh, Canada. So the Canadian Expeditionary Force. Canadian Home Forces. Canadian CIC. I need to set up actual commands behind the front lines. Uh, the North American Fleet. Transport Capacity 84. Weight 21. We're going to put them on the North American Fleet. We're going to bring the Canadians to Europe. So we're going to send them into Cherbourg as well. I think Cherbourg is a good place to bring our troops in. Well, maybe not. They can probably come in somewhere further east. Um, let's bring them into St. Nazire. Really? They're going to cross the channel in five days? That's fast, man. All right. I won't complain about that. Um, yeah, so we're bringing the French over. Um, we've definitely got some manpower we can recruit, but still, um, taking our time to build up some more, more troops here. Um, garrison, reserve division, infantry, okay, so where do we, required command, provided command, so this guy, Duval, could definitely bring in some additional forces. So we're going to go ahead and send these guys over here. Um as well as an aeronautical unit. Sweet. It's going to take you guys 23 days. We could move you by rail, I guess. We've got plenty of rail points, right? It's kind of awesome is, is kind of the way rail, rail power is reflected in this game. We've got a large force here in the Alps, which is really kind of keeping an eye on the Italians, hoping that they don't come in. Meanwhile, we've got a territorial division here in the uh, Alps as well that we had raised. So we're going to move them up to join Dubal as well. I think I may launch an offensive. You know, if the Germans aren't going to try and cut me off here, I may drive down Friedrichshafen toward Friedrichshafen and then swing up toward Stuttgart. Um, it, it should, I think, prompt a German reaction. I just need to make sure I build up enough reinforcements here so that if the Germans do cross the Rhine from Strasbourg that we've got the ability to kind of shoot them to pieces. But... The way things are going right now, these guys are in pretty good shape. So that looks good. And I think my main focus uh, is essentially um, the British, again, advancing into the SAR. I'm not sure if that's sustainable. The BEF is like one-fifth as strong as they were not that long ago. So maybe something we have to pull back toward Theonville. But the fact that we've got you know an army almost as strong as the BEF was last turn is coming in by rail to Theonville next turn means that we should be okay um, to take that risk and we can always pull out if we need to um, but as far as that's concerned we've got some good why don't we do this here we've got some French generals here that we need to we need to move I'd say we'll move here and we'll move them by rail so we need to move them into the Morgan how because we've got a lot of troops that are suffering penalties and we don't want the enemy to, to come at us the Entente Corps, and uh, if we can kind of split some of these troops off and reduce some of these penalties, then we'll we'll be more effective than the Germans, who I, th I believe are in in a large case overstacked with a lot of their troops. But um, yeah, so we only did one turn here, but a lot of it's setting the stage. We did fight a couple battles, but our munitions stockpile did increase, uh, so that's good. And um, yeah, I think that's. I don't really have any other decisions I can make right now, do I? 
No, we can go to the diplomacy phase real quick here. Um, so we've got, where is Italy? Where are you, Italy? Italy. Italy. All right, so Italy is... Um, we've already got a diplomat here. Central powers do as well. Uh, where are they right now? How do I tell? Italy. Alignment, 77% Entente, 23% Central Powers. So they need to become 80% to uh, join us. And um, yeah, so that's good. Um, excellent, excellent. I don't know if there's anything else I can do with them here real quick. I guess we can check. Yeah, we lost Yemen. Okay. We lost, we won in the SAR and we won in Mets. So, okay. So we won all those battles. Yay. And in terms of diplomacy, we've got the Italians who are almost ready to come in on our side, it would appear. Um, let's see where else we've got. Romania, not quite as clear. Um, Bulgaria is pretty neutral. Greece is sliding toward us. Serbia is obviously pro Entente. Great Britain. We've got slight. Ooh, no. What are the Americans doing? Um, the United States is always pro Entente. Okay, so I guess that's not something I need to worry about. Austria, obviously. Ottomans, obviously. Siberia, Greece, Serbia. Belgium, certainly Entente. Um, given the fact that. The, oh, actually, maybe not, because they're neutral right now, and the Germans haven't invaded them yet. I don't think they will join the war, though. That would be a little ahistorical. Same for Holland. Denmark, not really worried about. Switzerland, not really worried about. Sweden, Norway. Portugal is 90% Entente. They need to be... Hmm. So they are pro-us. Nothing's happened there yet with that. Um, Spain firmly cut down the middle. Japan is not in the war yet, are they? Pro Entente. I don't even know if I can control them. Persia, Afghanistan, Arabia, Brazil, Luxembourg, Mexico. Okay, so no one else that really matters. I don't really understand research at all. Um, but yeah, so we're there. Do we want to advance this force into the Sahara? We could drive an Al Arash, but we really don't have any troops here. Uh, that is one thing I may want to do before we end this, is just before I forget. Can we raise any colonials in... in uh, doesn't look like we can. Nope. Doesn't look like we can. Um, and then let's also not forget about India. Oh, India, where are you? Oh, that's cool. Surrounded by impassable water. Okay, so the game simulates harbors freezing over, as they historically did. So that's neat. We've got a fleet here that's kind of bombarding or besieging or what have you, uh, German East um, Africa. I don't see any German merchant ships, or not East Africa, but German East, uh, no, China, German German China. We've got an Australian force here, the Anza, or Anzac, I guess. Um, we could probably use them in Europe as well. Um, and I think we're pretty good there. So all in all, things are going okay. Um, colonial front, not as well as I'd like. Um, more success on the Western front, although I'm worried I might be overextending and blooding myself, but I guess we'll find that out shortly anyway. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's about where we're at here late December. Only did one turn, but again, setting up some... Uh, offensives here in the future. Uh, the main reason uh, that I went ahead and launched that attack into the SAR, even though it was probably pretty risky and maybe something we should have avoided, uh, is because I had those British troops that can come into Theonville uh, this next turn and uh, hopefully strengthen those guys to a point where the Germans would have to peel considerable resources away to accomplish anything here. Uh, the main German force has been isolated here in the south. Looks like we can still probably easily advance into Lorient, which we will do as soon as Metz falls. And um, from there, 
We will really pose a threat to the German industrial heartland in the Rhine. And I have to think at that point, if the Germans haven't already, that they'll either peel forces off their southern flank or they'll bring troops across from Russia. They may already be doing that. You can see here there's 120. They had about 300 here. I don't know what they have here. Probably not too strong. And then we've got over 2,000 troops down here in terms of uh, firepower, plus whatever this unit is. But... Um, you know, I'm certainly bleeding myself dry. It's going to make driving further inland difficult. But if I can at least threaten the Rhine or maybe even start taking the Rhine, I've got to think that's going to be something that'll set off alarm bells in Berlin and get them rushing forces our way. But, uh, and then the, the other challenge at that point is if we get there, if we get there, uh, which is a big gift given the fact that the war is kind of entering its static phase. If we get there, then the front opens up to being much wider, and it's going to be more difficult for us to maintain our cohesion and advance without threatening our own flanks. But uh, and I'm sure the Germans have a considerable number of um, a considerable number of reserves being raised, just like we do now. But uh, anyway, that's going to be all that she wrote here for today. I appreciate you tuning in here, and until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.